Well, good morning, everybody. For those of you I do not know, my name is Mike. It's honor to welcome you here to North Stars. We begin this brand new series called Under Pressure. At some point in all our lives, what we're going to talk about over these next few weeks, you are going to live. So I would encourage you to jot down thoughts this morning. So if you were given the sermon note sheet on the way in, uh, there's a little QR code down at the bottom. You can scan that QR code and it takes you to our sermon notes app or go to North Star Church Georgia in the app store and follow along there. But I am really, really glad you're here because I believe these next few weeks could be pivotal in your journey with the Lord. If you know him, it will help you grow in him. If you don't know him, what an opportunity to meet him. So I want you to do me a favor, take your Bible, turn to the book of James. James chapter one is where we're gonna camp out. And today we're gonna look at verses one through five only, but we're literally gonna be in James for a minute for over these next few weeks because I believe it's exactly what we need. It's exactly what I need for the things that, that I'm going through and the things that you're going through in life. So there's a couple of phrases you'll hear a lot during the series. One is process, right? God is, God is at work in you, so he works on you by working in you. And it's a process. It isn't, you're not a completed product. I want everybody to look to their right, look to your right, look to your left. All right, they ain't got it together, all right? And so that's what I'm telling you. We're all in process. We're all trying to figure out this journey. But here's what I'm gonna tell you, and you'll hear this phrase a thousand times over these next few weeks. God's never gonna waste your time, and he's never gonna waste your experiences. What you go through in life is not going to be wasted. Nothing is wasted. James chapter one, verse one. We're gonna read it and then we'll stand here in a second. I want you to look at how James begins this letter. Hopefully you got your app out or you got your Bible open. You've got pen, pencil, something to write with today because I think it's exactly where we're at. This letter is from James. All right. So a little Bible quiz. Who wrote the book of James? Uh, Y'all are really smart people. All right. So let me tell you who James was. This isn't James, son of Alphaeus. This is, this was known as James the just. He was James, the half brother of Jesus. So our heavenly father was his father, right? Mary was a virgin and she had Jesus, but Jesus, Joseph, Mary's husband, earthly husband, had sons. One of them was James. James was the brother, half brother of Jesus. Interesting, because we know from other accounts in scripture, James did not believe in Jesus till after the resurrection. That's a powerful truth. And I'm telling you, when you get that, it, it's going to change how you read the book. James, this guy, didn't buy Jesus. Like, Jesus is out doing his miracles. Jesus is doing his thing. James wasn't, James wasn't buying it. In fact, I think you could use the phrase, I'll believe it when I see it. Well, he saw it post-resurrection, and the Bible says that Jesus made a, an appearance to James after the resurrection, and James was all in. James became the first pastor of the early church in Jerusalem, right? He wrote this letter, and most scholars think, and I don't include myself in that group, but most scholars think, and I'd say I don't, I'm not a scholar, I, believe, I agree with what they said. This was the first letter that went out. This was between 40 and 49 AD. So I mean, this is like just after Jesus. This letter is from James. That's who James is. He was known, get this, he was known as leather knees. 
because he spent so much time, they said his knees were like the knees of a camel because he spent so much time in prayer. Legend has, most church historians believe that James was martyred for his faith by being pushed off the top of the Temple Mount and he fell, but he didn't die when he hit the ground. They said that the last recorded things from James was him praying for people to believe in Jesus and praying for the church. This letter is from James. That's James. But let's look at what he says next. A slave of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm writing to the 12 tribes of Jewish believers scattered abroad. He said, I am, let me tell you who I am. I am a bond servant of God. Time out real quick. What was his relationship to Jesus? What was he? Brother, right? Who was his mother? Two pretty important characters. That's not how he refers to himself. James is doing no name dropping here. He said, let me tell you who I am. I am James, a bond servant, a doulos, a choice servant of Jesus Christ, my Lord. Listen, I'm gonna tell you something about James. He pulls zero punches. If you're like, I like people that just tell it like it is, guess what? You're gonna like James. If you go, I get my feelings hurt real easy, you're gonna hate James, right? I mean, because he just lays it out there. This is who he is. He said, I am a bond servant. I'm not Jesus's brother. I'm not the son of Mary. I met a resurrected savior and I have submitted my life and given my life to Jesus. That's who he is, straight up. And he said, I'm writing to the 12 tribes of Israel, which means I'm writing to all the Jewish people. Paul was known as the evangelist to the Gentiles. He is known as the evangelist to the Jews. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Would y'all stand with me in honor of reading God's word together? See, I didn't make you stand the whole time, all right? It's a little, little Labor Day break. Here we go, verse two. Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, all right, time out. This, this only makes sense if you read verse one. To the Jews that are scattered abroad, why were they scattered abroad? persecution. They said yes to Jesus. They became part of the early church. And if you denied, if you denied your Jewish faith, your enemy, number one, number two, persecution's coming. And we were, we did a whole series here in the book of Acts for a long time. The believers scattered all over. When he writes and he said, when you face Trials or troubles of any kind, they understood trials and troubles. My trials and troubles don't look like theirs, right? Theirs is life and death. Their families have turned away from them. Life has turned away from them. They're living in a new city. It, it's like reading it now in Ackworth in Kennesaw, Georgia. And this morning when I was coming in, uh, they were talking about the Ukraine and a water supply being hit during all the bombings over there and whole villages not having anything to drink. Everything's polluted. They read this very differently than I read it. Does that make sense? I read it as tech lost again this weekend, all right? And so that's how I read it. Not, not where they're at. Now listen to what he goes on to say. Dear brothers and sisters, look at the next word before troubles. What's that word? When. Not if, when troubles of any kind come your way, meaning they're gonna come dressed differently. Multicolored trials. When they come your way, <laughs> this is the part, this is the part you just wanna go, James, I really wish this wasn't in there. When these things come your way, consider it an opportunity for great, what's the next word? We're going to talk about that because you're like, I got a real problem with that. All right, we're going to, we're going to talk about it. For you know that when your faith is tested, your patient endurance has a chance 
to grow. Some versions say patient, some say endurance, but really it is a picture of patient endurance. It's literally meaning you are under the weight of, but choosing not to get out from under. Why? Because you consider it joy and you know God is doing something in you while you're going through it. So what he goes on to say, So when your faith is tested, that endurance has a chance to grow. Verse four, let it grow. Let it grow. Let it happen. When your endurance is fully developed, you'll be perfect and complete, needing nothing. We'll go into another summer of Olympic games. It was the picture of one commentator, Adam Clark, said it's like the Greek games. So in the Greek games, their, their version of the decathlon It's a person that finishes the decathlon. They've gone through every measure and they finished and they are considered in Greek games, perfect and complete. Life is a decathlon and it's tough. But when you finish, there's there's an end goal to this. If you need wisdom, Ask our generous God, he'll give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking. For when you ask him, be sure that your faith is in God alone. Don't waver for a person with divided loyalties is unsettled as a wave of the sea that's blown and tossed by the wind. Would y'all pray with me? God, teach us, grow us, shape us, and show us who you are when we're feeling under pressure. That is what I pray, and I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Before you're seated, find two people around you and say, I'm sorry you had to be here on Labor Day weekend too. All right, do that real quick, and then we can, we can get going. All right. This is a treatise in the Christian journey. Let me, let me say this up top. This journey... From birth till we're done is not easy. Can I get an amen on that? Things come your way that you cause. Some things come your way, some other people cause. And some things come your way, come your way that life just happens. But here's what I'm going to tell you before we dive into all these things. None of it will be wasted if you don't let it be wasted. Faith is not, faith is not grown through these things. Faith is shown through these things, right? We see, God doesn't test our faith so he knows what it's worth. He tests our faith so we know what it's worth. Four things, ready? Pen, pencil, lipstick, mascara, thumbs. I want you to type in a couple things. Here we go. Number one, remember in the darkness what God has shown me in the light. Remember in the darkness what God has shown me in the light. When troubles, when troubles, not if troubles, when troubles come your way, consider it an opportunity for great, what's the next word? <laughs> that was terrible. All right, and so y'all can do better than that. Uh, consider it an opportunity for great joy. All right, that's not what he says. Listen to what he says. Consider it an opportunity for great what? There we go. That's what I'm talking about. Not happiness. Happiness is external. Joy is internal. Happiness is when all your teams won yesterday. That's happiness. <laughs> Ann and I are West Virginia and Georgia Tech fans. Doesn't happen a lot. All right, and so that's happiness, right? Joy is an internal job. Consider it great joy. Why? Because if I am going through something, God is working on me so he can work in me. He's not going to waste it. Never forget in the dark what you know to be true in the light. What do we know in the dark? Here's what we know. A couple things. You can pin them down. We're going to move on. He is good. 
he is good. His essence is goodness. First John tells us he is love. He is patient. And he is not done. This season that you're walking through, is it going to last forever? How many of y'all have ever been in a season of life and you felt like it was never going to end? Raise your hand. How many of you, though, you look back in the rearview mirror and go, it did end? Raise your hand. Okay. It's, 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 a, it's a process. When you are walking with the Lord... God isn't wasting anything. He is good. But I'm going to tell you this. I want everybody to look at me. And I want you to hear, hear my heart. Sometimes he use, has to use bad things because we live in a fallen world. Boy, these Jews felt it. This early church felt it. Man, they've submitted and given their life to Jesus. And I mean, now the whole barrel of, of, of life has turned on them and they're scattered. They're not with their families. Their families have disowned them. And he's writing to them going, consider it great joy because you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. You are going to learn things here you're going to use there. Remember in the darkness what God has shown me in the light. This isn't forever. Consider it joy. Well, Mike, I don't feel joyful in it. I think that's why the word consider is so important. Consider it joy. It don't feel like joy. You don't want it to be joy. So I talked to college coaches all the time, <clears throat> and I say, if I could give one word to parents of athletes, what would it be? And this is universal, football, baseball, doesn't matter. Number one thing they tell me every time, let your kid fail, because they'll learn more in failure than they will from anything else. So guess what we do as parents? We don't let them fail, right? So we don't want it. I didn't want my kids to fail. You don't want your kids to fail. But yet in that, they grow. Would y'all agree? How many of you, you can just nod your head, you are shaped more by your failure than your successes? That's me. Number two, keep my faith in the driver's seat and my emotions in the passenger seat. Keep my faith in the driver's seat and my emotions in the passenger seat. Literally, when it says, when you are creating this enduring patience, I want, they're going to pop the verse up, and I want you to say this first line with me. Ready? On the count of three, let's read those first few words just till the comma. Ready? So let it grow. Don't, don't, don't come out from under it. Why? Because something is happening there. Let it grow. But here's what happens. This is universal, and I want you to write this in. We don't like pain. I don't like pain. But pain is part of the process. It's called, it's so the, the, the uh, scholarly word, we don't use a lot of those around here at North Star, but the scholarly word is progressive sanctification. God is sanctified. Is anybody here completed, like you feel like you've got it all together? Anybody, anybody? No, so we're all in progressive sanctification. I met Jesus, and until the day I go to heaven, I will be in process. Let it grow. Great leader named Sam Chand, he says it this way, we will only grow to the threshold of our pain. Once we hit our pain point, we always want to come out from under, but yet it's at that pain point that our depth has grown. Does that make sense to everybody? 
So Casey uh, every week does workouts for a local baseball team. And as he's teaching those kids, the, the, the principle is not to come out from under the weight, right? It's to let the weight do its work. He's got an he's got end goal for those athletes. Well, this is the picture of the weight of life. Let me tell you something. Some of you are in it right now. I love, I, I love what he says, and I hate what he says, so let it grow. For when your patient endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect to complete, needing nothing. And I'm going to tell you something. There's going to be some points you're going to walk through in life. You're going to be like, all right, I got the white flag out. Let me tell you something. I've carried the white flag for seasons where I'm like, I don't want to wear, I don't want to be under this anymore. But yet I look back now and that's where my patient endurance grew. Number three. Ask God to show me my next steps. I love this. I love what James, this is a powerful thing that James says here. Verse five, if you need, what's the word he uses next? All right, so we have wisdom, we have knowledge. Knowledge is an accumulation of facts. I gathered up a lot of knowledge for exams that I took in my undergrad, my high school years, my undergrad years, and my master's years. I gathered up a lot of knowledge. I don't remember a lot of the things I learned. It was just knowledge. Wisdom is the, not just knowledge, but it's being able to see things from God's perspective. I want you to remember that. Seeing things from God's perspective. If any of you needs wisdom, ask our what kind of God? What's James say next? Our generous God, and he'll give it to you. He won't rebuke you for asking. Wisdom about what? Wisdom for life? Well, maybe. That's usually the context that's taken in. That's not what he's saying. Here's what he's saying. When you are up under the weight, and you're like, God, I don't know what you're doing. I don't know if you've taken a day off. I don't know if you've forgotten me, but the weight of life is getting heavy, the death that I've walked through, the stuff I'm going through in my job, the stuff I'm going through in my marriage, the stuff I'm going through in my family, it is wearing me down. If any of you lacks wisdom, seeing things from his perspective, ask him, he's glad to tell you. Ask him. God doesn't look at you and go, what, why, why, why are you asking me again? You know what he's going to say? I'm, I'll maybe show it to you. Maybe I won't. But I'm okay with you asking. I love it how the father, in fact, it was in our summer series when the father took his daughter who was dying to Jesus and Jesus said, do you believe? And the father answered, I do believe, help me with my unbelief. That's what he's talking about here. Well, Mike, I, one day, maybe I'll grow to the point you are and I'll just look at everything that comes my way in life and I'll just smile and go, well, we'll get through it. Well, I got some family on the front row that'll tell you it don't quite work out like that in the Lynch house, all right? Because I'm going through it like you do. And there are points in my life that I look at and go, God, what are you doing? Why am, why am I going through this? Why is this person going through this? If any of you lacks wisdom, ask. I'll, I'll give you what you need. But it goes with number four. You got to do what he says. But when you ask him, be sure your faith, and this is the, this is the powerful piece here. Be sure your faith is in God alone. Time out real quick. Not in the answer alone. Guess, guess what answer we like? 
We like good answers. We like, oh, I'm about to let you out from under that weight answers. Sometimes God's answer is, his answer is, not now. Be sure your faith is in God alone. Don't waver. Don't doubt. Here's the word I want you to write under number four. Ready? Trust. Here's what you develop in these seasons of being under. You develop trust. James got trust. Because he didn't believe and he did believe. So I know sitting in the sound of my voice this morning in Compass, up in True North, and many of you watching online and out on the patio today, there, there are a few of you, you don't know Jesus yet. You are where James was prior to the resurrection. Can I just tell you this? Number one, I'm honored you're here. Number two, I don't know how you do it without Jesus. I really don't because life is heavy. Maybe today this letter from a former skeptic is what you needed to get you off center. For some of you, you're under the weight now. You're walking through life's stuff now. He's got you. And he's going to see you through. He's working on us by working in us and nothing is wasted. Would you pray with me? I felt so impressed driving in early, early this morning, coming down 41, that there will be some, that today was the day you needed to meet Jesus. I can just hear James post-resurrection seeing his brother who died on Friday and is now back on Sunday. I can hear James screaming, I believe, and falling to his knees. Maybe today that's you. My God, believe. Can I lead you in a prayer to meet him? Could I? It goes like this, dear Lord Jesus, I need you. I believe that you live for me. I believe you died for me. And I believe you rose again just for me. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus, and be my savior today. I turn from my sins and I turn towards you. Lord, if you prayed that prayer today, that little card that you were told about by your host earlier, if you'll just take that out, put your name on it, your email on it, and just check the box that I accepted Christ, and our, our team will tell you what's next. Maybe today you're in the season. You're in the pinch. You're in the stuff. You're in the grind, and you're just like, God, I want to patiently endure. Would you just take a second and talk to him?